conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements hey everybody dr rick wallace dropping in here uh, i'm not going to be long i just want to do a little uh setup and uh, com pre-commentary on the video you are about to watch that my wife Marion created about repelling uh, and transcending negative energy. Uh, she focused primarily on the repelling of energy. I want to focus just briefly as a precursor on the ability to transcend and transform negative energy. It is a uh, power and skill that takes time to develop it's not something that you should be trying if you're just learning how uh, to manage how you emit how you respond to and how you uh, produce your own energy field because energy is literally measured every thought you have uh, produces an emission of energy on a hertz scale and it can range anywhere from zero to 700 or more and you want to keep your vibrations and your your frequencies above your you want your frequency above 500 at all costs you want to maintain that obviously there are things that are going to happen uh that will bring you down below 500 but that's not where you want to operate that's not where you want to live that's not where you want to live. That's uh, So you want to get up above that. Marion is talking about some real life specific situations and issues that we've dealt with over the last several weeks and how she personally uh, dealt with them. What I want you to do is I want you to focus on some of the things she talks about. Not so much specifics or if you agree with everything, but the understanding that, that first of all, you don't allow negative energy in your space. If it's there, you immediately address it. You do what you need to do to offset it to repel it to push it back normally if you're functioning at a high enough frequency your vibrations are going to uh, resonate with other vibrations and frequencies along the same area and it will it, 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 correspondently and conversely repel anything else so the idea is to make sure that you're functioning at a high frequency but there's also something you'll be able to learn to do and very few people talk about this but something that i've been able to learn to do is i don't shy away from other people's negative energy i don't allow it around me but when it comes i've learned how to literally transcend use energy transcendency to transform negative energy into positive energy it's the same thing that the eagle uses when uh, it wants to climb to exceptional heights. It literally fly, flies against the wind, uses the force of the wind to lift it to higher heights. It transforms energy. It uh, reshapes it. So there's this place that you can get to that literally you can transcend energy. You can take energy and transcend it because energy can't be destroyed, but it can be um, transferred. And when you, when you transfer it, you can transform it. So just pay attention to what she says. Think about it if you drop your comments in the uh, comment box. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters. And I'm not going to be long. I'm only going to take a few minutes because I'm sitting outside the gym about to go into one of my barbell classes um, because it's like something that I really enjoy and it's something that keeps my cardiovascular health up and overall helps me to be a stronger and and you know um exercise creates endorphins that put you in a better mood so if anybody's struggling with uh feelings of depression or especially right now during the pandemic you know things can be a little hard on us so i recommend just trying to fit in a little exercise routine before you start you know well after your prayer time that's if you pray uh, a little exercise because that's only going to help your day become brighter and brighter and brighter so that's what i'm trying to do today but i wanted to shoot a little video because there's like something really on my mind and something that i just wanted to share it's going to be a conversational piece so it's not like it's going to be in some type of order or anything because i don't have long and i just wanted to get it out but this past week and i celebrated my daughter paris's sweet 16 birthday and uh, I actually started preparing for it um, maybe like a month ago because I had to make so much preparation and uh, but that's not it I, I, this topic today is just going to be about us 
learning how to co-parent and not necessarily just co-parent but to be able to engage um both sides of the family spectrum like the mother side and the father side effectively and efficiently so that our children can have can learn how to engage people in a healthy and an effective manner and if us adults if we can't do that then that kind of makes it harder on our children but so uh this video i'm just going to share a little bit what experiences that i've went through and just to hope to help us out tell people know that there are uh, better ways of handling each other but this past week when I tell you guys I had some of the most negative energy come at me while I was planning finalizing my daughter's birthday sweet 16 and I believe I know who that person is or who the people are um, but it was like non-stop like from the time I wake up in the morning to when it's time for me to go to bed negative energy I feel negative energy and I feel positive energy but when I have negative energy coming to me it's coming to me from the left and I really don't know who it's coming from but I can feel it and it's a force and it's a, a, a very ugly deep like dark force but it's just depends on how negative that person is I can actually feel their energy I know some people say that but guys it's true you can really feel another person's energy especially if it's really really strong and when I say all week, I felt the energy of that person or the people. And I was mentioning to someone, I said, I don't know why when I wake up in the morning, I got so much negative, I feel so much negative energy. I'm like, I haven't even woke up yet. So I haven't had time to offend anyone or to do anything crazy. So I don't know where all this negative energy is coming from, but it's there. And so uh, what people don't understand is that I have a personal relationship with God so when I first start my day that's in prayer time that's in dedication you know that's our time our communication that's how we commune and I pray and I listen and you know I feel God's presence and so I'm asking for protection and covering over myself and over my family so when I get out of that prayer closet I'm straight so that negative energy is going to be repelled because I'm going to always be coming from a try to be coming from a positive place now there are certain situations that people put you in that may give you negative energy and you have to immediately turn that energy around into something positive so when i tell you guys it was nothing but negative energy and i'm like oh my god this person really does not i mean how could this person or these people have a life if you got time to hold on a fester that much negative energy about somebody that's not even thinking about you then you have a problem and I pray for you I pray for all people that wake up in the morning and think something negative about another human being especially if that human being has not spoken to you in a while has not did anything to you has not said any negative thing about you let it go release you know that's that's a lot of times why we're so unhealthy in our bodies because we're so unhealthy in our minds and our spirit we're just unhealthy and we need to stop being that way towards people even if somebody has walked away from you and you feel like they didn't give you the closure that you needed you may not ever get that closure but why hold on to that negativity to where it's going to only destroy you because it's not going to destroy them they may not even be thinking about you no more let it go but I wanted to share this because I have I kind of kind of got an idea of what's going on and I won't mention the particulars but um, there's been a time that um, I had to walk away from some people and it wasn't like it's something that I wanted to do but I had to walk away because they were no longer healthy for me now in my past because I hadn't healed and that I was toxic myself you know I may have done things that attracted those people into my life and into my situation and and gave me some of that you know they met me where I was in other words I admit and if all of us need to admit 
there's a time in our lives where we weren't that positive and that we were toxic and negative ourselves. So we're going to attract those people. But there comes a time where you evolve and you change and you allow God, you, you ask God to redeem you and to heal you and purge you of anything that's not of him. And so when you go through the purging, and first of all, purging is not comfortable. It's the most uncomfortable thing you could ever do because you're admitting to God that you're flawed and you need him. You need his help. And so there's certain areas that we took way down deep inside of us. We took it down deep and we don't want nobody to touch it. Not even God. We're like, no, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to think about that. We don't talk about that. I don't want to deal with it. And then, but it's still internally in embedded into our psyche and, and and until we allow God to purge that we're going to be walking around with that negative energy and what I think people don't understand is the fact that you can't fake energy like energy is energy you can't fake it like you could be walking around here bubbly and oh, da, 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 da. you just cracking all these jokes and you're just smiling there cheesing in everybody's face and then they'd be like it's I don't know what it is but it's something about her. It's something about him that ain't right. Because energy cannot be faked. Another thing, a lot of us equate. I, I see a car backing up. <laughs> right on my tail. I'm like, okay, just don't hit me. Okay. Um, excuse me for being distracted. But um, I think that sometimes we think we can fake it by how well we do. Like successfully, like educationally materially financially you know we get all these big accolades and you know we think that's what success really is and to a certain extent it may be but not it's not the overall realm of success being a successful person mean that you're healthy and you're whole enough to handle other human beings that you are attached to or that like your family members or your friends or your loved ones you want to be healthy enough to handle them uh, like they deserve because I think a lot of times we we try we I want to put this the right way sometimes we we get arrogant enough to believe that we're better than other people and so because we have this superiority complex we feel like we can treat other people that we believe is beneath us you know badly like we can just treat them any kind of way they're just going to accept it because you know we are superior we have arrived we have all this success oh whoa look at me but i tell you what i don't care how much money you have i don't care how many accolades you own materially whatever the case may be if you don't know how to love somebody that god has given to you and put into your life to care for you have done nothing at all Sorry to tell you that, sis. Sorry to tell you that, bro. I don't care what you got in your 401k. I don't care how long you've done what you've done. If you don't know how to love your child, if you don't know how to love your daughter or your son, if you don't know how to love your mother or your father, if you don't know how to love your friend that's always had your back, if you don't know how to love your husband or your wife, then you have done nothing, nothing. And I said all this because it all boils down to our energy and the energy that we admit and how healthy and whole we are internally. Because, you know, the mind is something else. The mind will have you thinking that people are against you that aren't against you. And it's one of the reasons why there's a lot of women out there that have been murdered and killed by men because they never worked with their, they never dealt with their trauma. And in their mind, they dreamed up that the woman was cheating or she was doing whatever he thought she was doing that she really wasn't doing all because of it, it was in his mind and his psyche and his spirit. A lot of times relationships have to end because those people will not change their internal being it doesn't matter how good you look it doesn't like again your aesthetics everything doesn't matter if you got an ugly soul or ugly spirit so i pray for the people 
that I felt all the negative energy from, uh, from this past week. I've already prayed for you. I pray that God cleans your heart and that he helps you to forgive the people that you believe that have hurt you. I pray for you. I pray for you to release all of that negativity, all of that bad stuff that's inside of you so that you can actually walk in the right way, the way that God intends for you to walk, the way that God intends for you to example him. He wants to be examples of him. How can we be examples of him if we're hating on somebody else? And another thing, we don't have to agree with each other to respect each other and to be in right relationship with each other. If, if I don't have to agree with your life, you don't have to agree with mine, but we need to respect and mutually respect one another. That's what this thing is about. And being in a right relationship with another person has nothing to do with manipulation. I'm the person... I'm the type of person anybody know me as kind as generous that I, I, I can be and forgiven as I can be I cannot stand a liar or manipulator if I find out you lied to me and you're trying to manipulate me I may not ever speak to you again now I'll forgive you especially if you've done it more than once because I believe in forgiving people I think people make mistakes but if you commit that same offense towards me time and time again, eventually I'm going to say, okay, that's just who you are. And I need to accept that and walk away and deal with people that know how to treat me, like-minded people. And I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to move on with my life. But I'm not going to harbor any negative emotions and say, oh, you know what? She did me like this and repeatedly three times and I just hate her and I just wish her you know everything bad happened to her no not Marion no because I know whatever energy I put out I get back so I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna forgive you and I'm gonna move forward in my life and I'm gonna do and I'm gonna be the woman that God is calling me to be so with that said the negative energy that was put out this week and if you're really in tune with your body which I'm, I think most of us are you're going to feel that negative energy and you got to kind of discern where it's coming from. But for me, I always ask God for clarity. And so when I pray about something, he'll show it to me. And then people are so, they're so arrogant that they'll let you know that they're doing something or they'll let you know it's them. It's just so stupid to me, but they will like, they'll, do something as petty as screenshots and, and screenshot something and send it to somebody or just something really really petty but they're they don't know that like they're putting their fingerprint on it and it's like you know chick or bro i already knew that you were against me so now you just kind of sealed it so i'm good but that's clarity the Lord always reveals when people have ill will or ill intent towards you. He all it, it can be a conversation. It could be, for some reason, I get the, um, when people do me wrong or, or they're trying to deceive me or anything, I've had, I've, I've been in a relationship before, before with, a, with a man that was cheating on me. Every time he was with the other woman, he would butt dial me. You know, stupid stuff like that. Bro was stupid, okay? That's one instance. And then I get the little text messages that was supposed to go to somebody else that actually goes to me. Stupid. But that's God's way of letting you see those people don't mean you well. They don't mean you well. And how many times are you going to have to go through these situations with these same people before you realize they're no good for me. I'm going to let them go. And it's something about healthy boundaries. We have to learn how to have healthy boundaries. I talk about this a lot because I think in the african-american community we were taught so much about forgiveness but we were never taught about anything about boundaries like to have healthy boundaries is it's it's self-preservation like it preserves you we were never taught that never we were told it was okay for people to beat us rape us kick us spit on us wipe their feet on us and all and we had to forgive you know molest us 
and we had to forgive them and we still had to co-mingle with them. We had no choice and that's a lie from hell. Anybody that maliciously hurt you over and over again, you don't ever have to deal with them again. You need to forgive them to free yourself, but you don't have to deal with them again. So we've been taught unhealthy boundaries. We haven't been taught healthy boundaries. That's one of the things that I had to go back and do. I had to go back in my adult life and go back and learn healthy boundaries. And I did by reading a num numbers of books and by getting uh, counseling and all those things. So I had to work through a lot of the stuff that was happening to me because I didn't have healthy boundaries. Now, I, hey, I demand people handle me the way I'm gonna, cause I'm gonna treat you like, you know, like you, like, I, I mean, I'm gonna treat people the way I like, I wanna be treated. So I'm gonna always handle you with respect. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna be honest. Even if it pisses you off, if you ask me something, I'm gonna be honest to you un and real with you and authentic with you. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna tell you what you wanna hear. And it's okay, because I think we need more friends like that. I've had people pull my tail, you know, my, my coattail and say, hey, hey, you don't, don't do that. You don't need to do that. And then I take a step back and say, yep, yeah, you know what, you're right. There's nothing wrong with corrective criticism. It actually may make us better. So, I mean, I can't be on here much longer. Like I said, I'm out here outside by the gym and I need to get in there and get in, in my class. But I just wanted to say, I wanted to share with you guys some, I like to, sometimes I like to have conversational pieces so you guys can get to know me a little bit better. But yeah, that was my challenge of last week. It was, it wasn't hard putting it together, but it was just, I felt so much um, negative energy and forces like trying to come against me while I was trying to get this set up for for my, my baby, my precious baby. I did the same thing for my daughter, Sierra, the Sweet 16 celebration, most parents do it. Uh, but it was just so negative going up to that point. And I know who the people or the person or the people are. And all I can say is that I pray for you. I pray a release. I pray forgiveness for you in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind, and that you'll be able to move on in a healthy manner. And so this message was me to share a little bit about some of the things that I've went through this past last week, but also to encourage you uh, to make sure you you're putting out um, positive energy. And so in other words, that I mean, how you start your day is extremely important, whether it be meditation, prayer, you have to give you have to have a heart of gratitude to your maker, whoever that may be start off with gratitude start off with your communication with God to start your day and ask God to remove some of those things that may not be good in you and to so that you can go out in the world in a positive and a, a more up upbeat manner and make sure we're loving people and treating people the right way um, so that was my life experience and I'm so over it to where you know I'm like I just want to be left alone I don't bother anybody I don't wish no ill will on anyone and I just don't understand why some people have so much ill intent towards me but then it's spiritual I think people don't realize it it's very spiritual they don't understand they think they're so high and mighty some people are so high they're way up here they have everything they need but they don't realize they're missing the most important part part and that's the internal self like you got to work on that that person so that you can be who God is calling you to be and then if you don't believe in God or if you don't have a God that's on you but you can't force people or try to manipulate people to benefit you especially if they're you know if they are of God and if they follow God and so I have to go but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys and just to, to kind of encourage you all that I know that sometimes we wake up when we're not in the right mood, but we have to change the energy. Sometimes when I, when I realize that I woke up in a negative way and, and I have negative energy on me, I pray it off of me and I speak to the Lord. I say, Lord, change my, change my perception this morning, change my thoughts and change my energy. 
and as I go out into the day my day improves and I become a better person so that's what this video is about it's it's about how do you tackle um, negative energy how do you tackle people that may just not like you there's always gonna be somebody that just don't like you like you don't ever have to do anything to that person for that person to just look at you and say I don't like that person and somebody be like, why don't you like that? I just don't like her. Or I just don't like him, man. I don't know what's wrong with that. You know what that is? If they've never, if you've never physically really did anything to that person, that's spiritual. They don't even know. They don't know that, that you're irritated by their spirit or, or their demons are irritated by yours. It's just, it's spiritual. We got to deal with our inner man, y'all. We, we got to deal with that person, I'm telling you. And so I just encourage us to get healthy and whole. That's what our videos are about because uh, restoring ghettos forgotten is aimed towards the people that, you know, grew up in situations that may not have been very positive. And we may have learned a lot of our religion wrong, incorrectly, and it set the standards or it set the stage for us. And now we got to relearn all this stuff. But guess what? We're smart people. We can do it. We can change our thoughts so that we can ultimately change our lives and just be great people. So I want you guys to go out there and be great and fantastic. Anybody that's harmed you, grant them forgiveness, not for them, but for you so that you don't hold on into any negative energy or any negative animosity. And because you're going to attract what you put out. So always try to keep it light and right, you guys. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. Love Rick you. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box thank you hello everybody dr rick wallace here dropping in on you first of all i want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Yeah, sounded better than Jay. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements.